So trending on Twitter today, Square Enix uh, has been releasing some information and I have some concerns, but maybe even perhaps some hopes to share with you guys about it today. First and foremost, I want to start with the context for those of you so that way we're all on the same page and then you can always weigh in with your own thoughts and theories in the comments below. But hello everybody and welcome to my channel. My name is Brian if you're new around here, but if you're a returning subscriber, welcome back you beautiful beast. That's what you get for subscribing, by the way. Free compliments at the start of these videos. But let's dive into the context, and I'm going to share my concerns, especially my concerns as a historical Square Enix fan, because I think we've seen stuff like this before, but there's also things that just don't make sense. A couple of weird red flags, a couple things to explore. So let's do it. Square Enix writes, Achieving major growth in the game industry is difficult now for companies that compete primarily in the Japanese gaming market. Given its graying demographics, as such, it is critical for our business that we produce hit titles that speak to the global market, which offers greater scale in terms of both customers and sales volume. Furthermore, game development efforts are becoming more sizable and sophisticated as a result of technological advancements in the devices on which they are played, such as consoles and smart devices. The investment required to develop game titles is therefore an order of magnitude greater than in the past. In other words, the Japanese market is no longer sufficient for achieving a level of earnings that enables us to recoup our development and, and generate profit. And we therefore need to approach our development efforts based on an assumption that we have to succeed in the global market. So right off the bat for me, a few things just come to mind. First and foremost, Square Enix just recently sold off its Western development studios, which essentially was kind of their original push to be more of a global producer. Now, I did say I wanted to talk about my history here is that I feel like we've seen this kind of rhetoric from Square Enix before, namely during what maybe people consider some of the dark times, some of the things that actually led to even Final Fantasy XIV 1.0's struggles. Now, not completely, but if you start to remember during the transition from the PS2 to the PS3 era, there was this focus in on this globalization. Afterwards, after like, you know, Final Fantasy 13 really didn't land uh, on the global market as they wanted, as Final Fantasy XIV was struggling, as well as other games just not performing the, the way they did, the Square Enix CEO said, hey, we want to kind of niche back down into making some of these core titles. And one example of these great titles was Bravery Default. That was uh, its success, especially its success on the global market, I think was a very good sign for me as a, as a fan. And since then, we've seen really awesome and fun titles, I hope do well, for Square Enix. I, I, and I say I hope do well, we also have the idea of Outriders, which from their perspective hasn't necessarily achieved, I guess, their budgetary or marketing or dollar value estimate returns that they were hoping for. And this could be for a wide variety of reasons. We could talk about Game Pass. And if we need to in another video, I'd be happy to explore its impact. But the other thing that comes to mind is obviously Square Enix's insistence on PlayStation exclusives. PlayStation and PlayStation 5 being a well-received and widely available console, especially for PlayStation 4. But this has, I guess, my perspective going, well, if you also want to succeed, how much is Sony paying for those exclusives as opposed to just being everywhere, being on the PC, being on the console? And I think this could hopefully, as a sign of hope, be an opportunity for Square Enix to start publishing more and more and more games across all platforms. In fact, just today, been playing Bravery Default 2. Thanks, Karamek, for that amazing gift to my Steam library. I've been sitting down playing that on Steam Deck. This was a game that originally launched, obviously, on Nintendo Switch. It's now on Steam Deck, and I couldn't be happier or pleased that this is an option for me to play. And so that's essentially where, like, this statement could be hopeful. It could be a sign that they're looking at these exclusivity deals and not necessarily making the most sense. I do believe that we'll see more of an era of the timed exclusive than we've ever seen in the past as PlayStation and Xbox try to duke it out to get people into their ecosystems. But that's never in my mind set right. It's never been kind of a for the gamer or even for the community around a game that helps benefit itself. But the things that don't sit right with me is that I want Square Enix games. And I'm fine if they want to have studios and make a wide range of different options. 
But my hope is, is that they don't necessarily kind of lose one of the things that I feel has made the company special for all of these generations. From the early days where Dragon Warrior first introduced me to the RPG through Nintendo Power, aka Dragon Quest nowadays, to the day here, modern times, where I'm begging, pleading, hoping for a new Dragon Quest game to be released. And knowing that Dragon Quest 12 is out there on the horizon gives me hope. Knowing that we have Dragon Quest 10 offline, maybe that makes its way over there. This makes me concerned. This kind of statement makes me concerned. Titles that perform on a global market. We know that not necessarily Dragon Quest is one of the things, but maybe this is a good sign for Final Fantasy. As we look towards the future with Final Fantasy 16 on the horizon for summer 2023, that gives me hope right there. But locking it down to PlayStation only, I, I think that check has to be a big one. I, I honestly do. I think that has to be a big freaking check because, or maybe what they found is that residual sales, when they do release it to other platforms, ends up just being like you get paid twice. We'll have to, we'll, ne we'll never know unless for some reason I ever have a studio that gets offered any kind of exclusivity contract. I'll, I'll be sure to give you guys the details if I can, if that day ever comes about. What I hope here and what I'm confused by here is obviously I feel like the Western studios dropping those off was really trying to remove a lot of debt from their books. They had a lot of IP. They had a lot of global IP. They had a lot of value in that IP. And I think that's one aspect of it. The, the theory that we keep hearing whispered is that Sony is going to try to buy them up. And maybe that ends up being true, but there's other bigger buyers on the market, especially when you look at just the numbers that Final Fantasy 14 has been able to produce, how they've been able to sell, and how Yoshi P is saying like he wishes, he, he would love to see any other IP in the company be able to do what he has Final Fantasy 14 doing for Square Enix right now. I think we're going to see more of a push into those games as a service games. And we've seen them try to do that with Babylon's Fall unsuccessfully. So I don't know what this ultimately means. Is this a good sign? Is this a bad sign? How, how does this sit with you? This statement from Square Enix. I'd love to know because ultimately when reading it, it doesn't sit well. It's, it's not like it, I don't get good feelings about it because of the history, because of when I look back at when they were trying to do this in the past, it just didn't. The games just didn't land because I felt like they were just so market research that they lost any kind of, I don't know, magic to them, if we were going to use the term. But there could also be the sign of positivity where they're just going to say, we're, we're just going to make these games for everywhere. Maybe, maybe this is them announcing they're moving to Unreal Engine 5. I don't know. Now, all that being said, I just wanted to kind of get my thoughts out for you guys. Hopefully you enjoyed them. I'm very curious as about to what you are thinking. Sound off in the comments. Let me know. And thanks so much for being here. Anyway, until next time, take care.